All right, everybody. It's nice to see you guys today. Buenos dias. So I'm very excited because, as I mentioned, this is a very dear topic to me. Latinos with difficult mothers. Can you imagine, right? All our lives, we have these beautiful women around us that are raising us, and we just want to have a better bond with them. But how do we do that, right? So in everything that I ever do as a public speaker, as a psychotherapist, as a coach, I always start from my own experience, and I love telling people just the story and what's occurred, right? Um, and I have to tell you that last year, I took a vacation with my mother to Miami. And in doing that vacation, we ended up having a tiffle over like some salad or something, right? And what ended up happening is we're both in the hotel room, we're screaming at each other and we're just upset, tears are coming down, you know, mocos and there's mascara, right? And the moment that really just changed my life, and this was just last year in August, where it clicked for me, and this is where all this content is coming from, is my mom screams at me and she goes, what do you want from me? She goes, what do you want? And I really just had to sit there on the bed in the hotel room and I told her, I was like, you know what, mom? I would love for you to die much more healed than wounded. And everything just got silent, that's it. The tears stopped, I stopped crying, and that's it, we just hugged it out. Ever since that day, we've been like uña y tierra. We've been good. And it was me understanding that it took all those years of me even going to therapy, doing the work to get to that moment. There soon after, we got back from Miami, here back to LA, and then my mom one day was like, okay, mija, I'm open to going to therapy. This was after five years of telling my mom, vamos, I'll pay for it. I'll take you to lunch. I'll drive you there. I'll pick you up. And it wasn't until those moments when my mom was like, okay, I'll go where things have gotten better between us. Now, that's not everybody's story. I understand that. And I also understand that some of us just have some type of situationship with our mother, some type of relationship. And this is why we're doing this today. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun and just learning some tools to go back home and have a better relationship with our kids, with our nieces, with our moms, with everyone in our lives that might be a little bit difficult, all right? All right, so I'll start off with a little humor today because this is what it's about, right? Latino culture, we're funny people. So, um, question is, who loves dichos de mama, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to a couple and as you're hearing them, I want you to just write down what comes to you. What does your mama difícil say to you? So get ready as I read them to you. Number one. Espero que ya ni vas a la iglesia. Por eso estás haciendo tan mal decisiones. <laughs> Mija, ya tienes cuantos años y no encuentras a ningún hombre. ¿Qué te pasa, hija? Right? A ver, ¿y tú por qué estás sonriente viendo el teléfono? ¿A quién estás texteando? ¿Quién es? No me hables así. Ellos no te aman como yo te amo. ¿Dónde vas con esos shorts de mini nalga? Por eso te enfermas, por andar así. <laughs> yo a tu edad. Right? Who's heard that one? Yo a tu edad. No lo tires, todavía sirve. Right? <laughs> ¿Qué vas a hacer cuando me muera? Who's heard that one? Right? Right. Eres igual y inútil como tu padre. <laughs> Mona malcriada. Amor de lejos es de pendejos. For long, long distance relationships. Uh, let's see. Ellos no te aman como yo te amo. Ese amigo suyo no me gusta, me da mala espina. Yo no soy tu servienta, aquí no vive ningún servienta. Tú te vas a limpiar sola. Ni te puedes limpiar el tss y quieres novio. <ríe> no me cambies el tema. Saluda, pareces que no tienes educación. Abrígate que hace frío. It could be 100 degrees outside, but it's still cold, right? Abrígate. Join in, join in, grab a chair. Mamá, ¿me das permiso de salir? Pídele permiso a quién? A tu papá. Buena para andar en la calle, pero mala para limpiar. <laughs> right? No llegues tarde porque cuando te veas, me tienes con Jesús en la boca. ¿Qué crees que soy? ¿Tu pendeja? A mí no me engañas. Yo no nací ayer. Dale gracias a Dios que tienes madre y mucha madre. Me vas a matar de un coraje. 
Ven para acá o verás cómo te dirá. Búscame y me vas a encontrar. A little bit in English. No one loves you like I love you, right, for our English-speaking mothers. Keep talking back and see what happens. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you to do it. My favorite, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. One day you will thank me. Because I said so, that's why. God gave you a brain, use it. Your room likes like a cyclone ran through it. Let's play the quiet game. Someone better be bleeding. And my favorite, your ovaries have dust, right? For those that haven't had children. So that gives you just a little introduction into dichos de mamá. So I'll go around and have you guys share any that come to you. Dichos de mamá, what comes to you? What is your favorite dicho of your mother that just rings true to you? You're gonna miss me. What are you gonna do when I'm no longer around? ¿Qué vas a hacer sin mí? Anyone else? Así es. Aquí no es hotel. Aquí se respeta. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. So when we're little, they tell us que nos van a robar. We better stay close. And then when we get older, nobody is going to want us. They're the only ones who are going to love us, right? All right, anyone else con dicho de mamá? No? Perfect. All right, so we'll move forward with this. So another thing that I wanted to share with you today is the main topic and pain point of all of this is childhood wounds. So if we increase our emotional vocabulary and are able to express how we feel, we're able to negotiate and we're able to manage situations so they don't get all the way to the, to the bad parts, right? So I'm gonna ask you guys to quickly do an exercise on a phone or a piece of paper and write down all the emotional words that you know. All the ones you can think of. Sad, mad, I just gave you two, right? So go for it. As many as you can get, just go for it. And they can be in English and or Spanish, either one. All of them, all kinds of emotions, any emotional words you can think of. All right, guys, so now I want you to count how many you had. Anybody get 10? Raise your hand if you got 10, okay? Raise your hand if you got 15. Okay, raise your hand if you got 20. All right, so fun fact that's not so fun. Did you know that the level of emotional intelligence and vocabulary for the human is actually highly correlated with your finance, your level of happiness, and your level and ability to manage your emotions through communication? Did you know that? Yes, so not only are you gonna have a better relationship with your mother, but you're also gonna increase your income because the more you can express yourself with emotional vocabulary, the better your life will get. So here's what I did. Take one and pass it. So I made a list of all the emotional words that I could think of in English and in Spanish. Who of you guys in here were able to identify English and Spanish words? Yes, right, okay. So um, on this list, we actually have 115. What does that tell you? If there's 115 emotional words and we could only get up to like what, max in here, 15? We're not even using the full amount of our capacity here. So this is room for healing here. So I want you to take a list of which ones are familiar to you and which ones aren't. That's super important. And that's what will take us to the next. There we go. And as that's going around, go ahead and take a look and see what words come to you. Now, as you take this list home today with you, I want you to take a photo and share with as many people as you can. Why? Because if they increase their emotional vocabulary, you will have better relationships. The number one reason I think that we have difficult relationships with our mothers is because we get so into our emotions that we don't even know what to say in that moment. So we just say hurtful things or we say nothing at all. So in here, we have three types of people. We have the person that when they fight with their mother, they either freeze and they do nothing, or we have the person that fights back. That's me, I fight back like, yeah, no quiero. <laughs> or we have the person that just avoids. They just shut down, er, I'm not hearing nothing, and that's it. 
Who's an avoider in here? Avoids conflict at all costs. Anyone? Avoiders? Yeah. It depends. Absolutely. Any fighters in here? Like, no, voy a salir. Yes. And anybody that just freezes, like, er, I'm just not part of this, I'm out. Yes, exactly. So we're all different, and we have to know that, that with our mothers, that is the case, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to pair up quickly if we have an even number, and if not, we'll have a group of three, and we're going to go ahead and use I statements. But we're going to pretend that somebody is the mom and somebody is the child. So what I mean by that is even adult children have difficulty. How many of us in here have had or wanted to say something to mom, but we just couldn't bring ourselves to say it? Like, hey, mom, you know, I, we just had that fight, but I just want to tell you I loved you and I missed you. Yeah, anybody? Yeah, and this is what this list will help. Now, who has a language barrier? To her, ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué me dices? Dime en español. Anyone? Yeah, and that's important. So you can look on this like, I was upset, here it is, right? You could see what is that word in Spanish for them. And if even they don't know, then you can tell them and explain it to them. Because a lot of parents are like, ¿Qué es eso? Realize that our childhood wounds actually come into the room with us when we have these conflicts or fights with our mothers, right? Childhood wounds, imagine this. Imagine that your mother is raising you to the best of her ability, right? But who helped her learn her emotional vocabulary? Nobody. Who told her that it was okay to cry? Nobody. Who told her that it was all right to be strong but also be vulnerable? Nobody. En la cultura no se hace eso, right? So we're going to go ahead and pair up and just face each other, and we're going to use I statements. So I statements include I feel and practice using some of these words. All right, everyone. So I will share this with you. Um, once again, fun fact that's not so fun. Did you know that if you received an education in the United States at least for more than seven years, you are less likely to be in tune with your emotions? Because what we're taught in school is to read, write, science, projects, history. When do they stop and teach us about finance or emotion? Never. The two things that run our day every single day. Tell me you didn't wake up today and think about how do I feel? Do I have enough money to get gas, to get here, to get a chocolatito, to get a cafe, right? So this is what's important and we have to take it upon ourselves as a responsibility to learn about our emotions and how it affects others. And then on top of that, we have other layers and layers. Who's first gen in here? First generation American. Yeah. Who was brought here to this country a little later? Raised in another country. Yeah, and that's also a situation at some times. That adds different layers to the experience that we're having with having to be there for our parents, but also understand what are we experiencing, right? So something that was mentioned as we were doing the workshop was so important. How do I even teach my mom this if she won't even open up? That takes us to the last and third part of this, right? So the first one is the humor, the like, this is real, this is what I'm hearing every single day, this is la cultura, that we started con los dichos, right? The second part is, well, what do we do about this? What is the solution here? The solution is you. You can't change anybody else. That is a fact. The only person you have control of is yourself. And if you don't improve yourself, and if you don't even know your own vocab, check yourself and then come correct, right? So if you guys can actually increase your vocabulary to at least 30 words, and I'll challenge you, in Espanol and in English, you guys will see an increase in your relationships, asking for what you need, not what you want, what you need, and having a better relationship with your parents, right? Here comes the third part. Let's say you do all the work, 
and you go to therapy and you go to workshops and you talk with your homegirls. You're like, yeah, girl, me too. You have the, the tribe that fills you. This is your tribe right now. But then what? What about mama that hasn't gotten the help? She doesn't want to go to therapy. She's not having it. Está ocupada cocinando. No tengo tiempo para esas cosas. Esas chingaderas, right? I know I've heard that. So what do we do about it? This is what we do. Here is the golden nugget I'm going to give you guys today. We need reparative experiences. For every negative experience that we have had in our life, we need five positive ones to counteract that. Okay? So I'll repeat that. For every one negative, we need five positive. So if you think about your life, what does that tell you? We have a lot of work to do, right? So now I want you to really hone in, right? Laser focus your relationships with mamas, okay? When I say mama, it could be a tia that raised you. It could be a abuelita that raised you. It's your caretaker. A quien sea que le dices mama. So I want you to think about the experiences that you've had with her. Have they been more negative or have they been more positive? At one point in my own life, I had way more negative than positive. And that's when I made a personal decision to make a shift. And this is how I did it. I made a list of every single thing that I appreciated about my parents. A whole list. It could be down to like, I love the way that you separate el arroz from the carne. Because I don't eat carne. That was a tough one. And she got me after five years. She's got me now. Okay? Or the fact on the negative side that she avoided her feelings. The feelings did not come into the room. We're not talking about this. La ropa sucia se lava en casa. So I had to push through this. I started making a list and asking my mom so important questions. And this is what I did. Right here. Target, y'all. $14, right here. Things like this saved my life. I'm going to share why. My, your mother's story. How many of you in here actually know your mama's story? Actually truly know what she's been through? Asked her what her childhood was like. Did she get what she needed from her caretakers? Wait a minute, what was it like when you were pregnant with me? Were you happy? Were you surprised? Were you alone? Have you been dragging these feelings all this time? We don't, some of us don't know. We're lucky if we do. In this book, it's literally conversations with your mother. I love this book, and I'm creating one for Latinx. All right? So it's chapters, things you learned about life. They're always going to tell us, right? Porque yo digo. But they never tell us why, what happened. Oh, you got robbed at the store. Gotcha. So I'm going to leave my purse right here, right? But we don't know until they tell us. What was the scariest moment from your childhood? This is an important one, and I'm going to tell you, say this with caution. Some moms aren't ready to go there yet. So that's where these feelings come into play. Mama, ¿qué te gustó de tu niñez? What did you like about your childhood? Start with the easy first, and then go in little by little, getting to know your parent. One of the most beautiful things on earth is getting to know your parent as a human being and as an adult. I want you to really think about this. Our entire life, we only know our parents as our parents because we only existed until they were our parents. But we didn't know them when they weren't as knowledgeable or in tune with God or such a great cook. We didn't know when they were just trying to make it happen or trying to pay their bills or trying to hustle. We didn't know them back then. Ask them about that time because that's a mirror for you to see your own life and how you match up. You'll have and build a better relationship and bond with them, right? Okay, here's another thing that I'll share with you. In getting to know your parents, you'll get to know yourself, parts of yourself. I'm not saying you're all them, but there are parts of you that you can take what works and leave what doesn't. That's where you get to choose your own life. So what are some reparative experiences that we have wanted in this room? I'll share with you. I love just going to go get my nails done with my mom. We say nothing, but it's such a beautiful experience because my mom had so many years working in homes, limpiando. Her nails were never done. And that was really important to her because it showed that she had time for her. And I want you guys to share. What are some reparative moments that you would love with your mamá difícil? Anyone? Moments you'd like to have with mom. My mom loves, my name is Yesenia, uh, uh, my mom loves to garden, and I, I took that for granted growing up. Um, uh, we live in different cities now, but uh, now when I visit, I get to actually garden with her and not see it as like a chore, like helping her after cooking her 
gives you love from nothing but as an L. Now I understand also the healing magic of being outdoors and just like literally having your hands in the soil and that connection that she has to the land. Uh, I really appreciate now and we've literally like just bonded talking and just being outside. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. That's beautiful. Can anybody else relate to that? Yeah. Yes. Well, mine is not garden and all that but <laughs> mine is cooking. Yes. Like, like, to the or like, to the or I, that's why I don't have a name. Because I'm not talking about it. And I'm very grateful for that because I don't know what I would have done if I didn't make those dishes. Um, but we always just cook. That's right. It's a bonding moment and you have more of those and more of those and more of those and then you have open conversation about it. You're making tamales and it's like, where did you learn how to make these? And then they open up and they tell you a funny story. And, and on earth, the only thing we have is the memories that we take with us. That's it. Everything else that we have right now will be gone one day. Anyone else like to share a reparative moment they would like to have with their mamá difícil? Anyone else? It could be the smallest things. I'll share with you that we're not being as creative as we can be. One of the biggest things that we don't know how to ask for is what we didn't get in childhood. Some of us, a lot of us actually I'll say, didn't get enough of our love language. Our love languages are so different for everyone. For some people it could be gifts, for others it could be hugs and kisses, physical affection. For others it could be quality time, just see me, just be with me. For others it might be boasting about your, oh my child is so awesome and so great. Regardless of what your love language is, identify it. Understand what is my love language and how can I ask for what I need. For me, it was physical affection. I didn't get enough of it growing up because my parents were taught, you know, you don't hug and kiss them too much because you'll spoil them. So now that I'm older, I just ask her to just hug me just for a full minute and just hold me. And she complains. She goes, ay, tú aquí, bien extra, ¿por qué quieres tanto? And it's fine. It's okay. I'll take it because I'm asking for what I need. Anyone else know what they need? If you're open to sharing, knowing what you need. I'm definitely asking something. Yes. What would that look like? What would you want to ask your mama? Just, you know what? Honestly, just to sit down with me and watch TV. Yes. Yes. Que van a ver? What are you going to watch? Yes. That's it. That's it. William Levy. It's on. That's it. <laughs> Anyone else? The vendors? And do you help her with that to negotiate? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it could be the smallest thing. It could literally just be like, Mama, I, I brought a flan. Let's, let's have some together. It's opening up those conversations, setting up the environment for it. So I know our time is very limited, but I want to go around and ask you guys, what, if anything, are you taking from this? This is a short snippet, a very short, of a six-week-long course that I'm doing just so you understand where is this going? What type of tools do I have? Not everybody can afford therapy. I'm fully aware, I'm Latina. I know exactly how much that costs. So this is a few bucks at Target. Go pick one up. Don't find it there, go on Amazon, right? How about for Mother's Day, yes, get her flowers. Yes, take her out to eat. How about write her a notebook of the five top childhood memories you have with her that are amazing? Tears are just gonna come down, that's it. Puro Kleenex. That's it, right? So I'm going to go around and just ask, what are you taking with you, if anything, today? Just anything. So we'll start here. Um, I think understanding her story and yeah. her perspective and kind of what she didn't learn how to do the things that I kind of expected. Absolutely. Um, because uh, my idea of a better exercise is something that I didn't know about and trying to do that. That's it right there. You're going to start doing the work. I'm excited. I think I'm going to keep trying because sometimes you try to talk to her and she will put a wall and then you kind of just give up. So I'm just going to keep trying to have those conversations. Yeah. I think what I took was to work on improving the vocabulary, the language of trying to get across exactly what I mean when I uh, when we talk. Yeah, just, just the vocab in general. Nobody teaches us this. Where was this my entire life? I didn't learn until I was like 25. Yeah. Be more understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to second some of these just 
like learning the vocabulary so that I don't freeze up in, in difficult conversations and I know how to articulate myself better and more honestly and then also the, the bit about um, having a better comprehension of my mom's story so that I, I see where she's coming from. Yeah, yeah. Having an open heart and open ears. Yeah. Uh, thank you for reminding me uh, that we have tools such as humor. I oftentimes forget that part. I'm like too serious if I want to talk about something difficult and I just like get straight to like being sad and like uh, just thinking it too serious and forgetting that we can use humor. Um, kind of like, uh, like going up and down in the conversation, like uh, just rolling with it versus just like bam, like, you know, just going into it. Uh, so thank you for reminding me about that. Yeah, so I use it all the time. My grandma always used to tell me when she was living, she's like, pa que estudias tanto? Tienes que casarte, tener hijos. And I would tell her sarcastically, tienes tanta razón, estoy gastando el dinero. And then she, she got it, she knows. She knows I'm not, I'm here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, to me, um, it has been just a reminder of like, I think we each have our own story and it's like, oh, what is our story as a child growing up and our views of our parents, but really they continue to evolve as we do and really getting to know them who they are now. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I think um, the vocabulary is very important for me to so even know how to But if I know it, then I can maybe help them know it too. Absolutely. It starts with you and you share with others. And the next generation, if you have nieces and nephews and children and siblings. Yeah. Uh, mine was also a repetitive action, uh, you know, more positive than the negative one. Yeah. And knowing that ratio. Yeah. Um, it's never too late to share resources. You know, it's never too late. Absolutely. Mine's actually too, so I really like the quote because it's very true. Yes. So I don't want to it. Mm -hmm. um, this actually helps because when I think I'm angry, I'm more frustrated. Um, mm -hmm. And I think maybe I don't know my mom as a person. I know she has a life, but I don't think I know her as a person. I just know as oh, this is my mom. She's not right. getting it. She's, you know, different. She grew up in Mexico, went to school in Mexico. It's different from her school here. You know, so I think that makes a difference. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think uh, understanding uh, my own love language so that I can inspire those around me how mm -hmm. they can show their love and appreciation towards me, um, as well as understanding that I can't change my situation or the people that are my family, um, but I can change the way I act and react towards them. That's it, yes. I think my takeaway is to stay curious and keep asking questions so we can better understand each other and ourselves. Yeah, staying curious is a golden nugget. You guys said so many diamonds right there. Anyone from what you guys got today? Would you like to share? It's okay. How about you ladies in the back? Uh, just be more aware of the moment. Yeah. Yeah, being present with her. Yeah, being present. Yeah. Would you like to share? I love my agents. I'm more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You cannot get what you don't know you need, right? So in ending, I'll share with you guys, um, out of that situation with my mom on vacation in the hotel crying, this is literally what came to me when she asked me, what do you want from me, right? I told her that I want her to die much more healed than wounded. And in that, a light bulb went off for me, for me and my practice, my business, and just going out in the world. Like, why am I here? I'll share with you guys that when my mother was three months pregnant with me, they told her to have an abortion because I was gonna have Down syndrome. I don't have Down syndrome, I'm here. They went home, her and my dad, devastated. They thought about it for a week, they prayed on it, they thought about it, and they decided that whatever was going to be, was going to be, and here I am. And because of that, and a lot of work that I've done, I've come to the conclusion that that is my mission. My mission is to be exactly right here, right now, to help other individuals have the same opportunity with their loved ones. And that's why I'm here. This is why I do what I do. So I'm super thankful for you guys spending the time and learning something. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to email me or shoot me a text. All right? Thanks, everyone. Yeah, you're welcome.